What's going on everybody? My name is Matt and welcome back to another video on overcoming retroactive jealousy. And in this video, we're going to talk about four meditation practices that you should be adopting in your everyday life in order to take down your retroactive jealousy. Remember, I always say retroactive jealousy is based on anxiety, okay? Retroactive jealousy is a branch of anxiety. And so if we treat this as general anxiety, we can actually start to cure it. And one of the biggest, biggest fighters against uh, anxiety is meditation. And meditation gets, a lot of people don't wanna do it. Let's just say that. A lot of people don't want to do it. And it it's unfortunate. I work with a lot of clients and that's the one thing I'll always ask them when they come to me and say, oh, I've, I've been trying all the stuff you're talking about and still I'm suffering from retroactive jealousy. Still, um, I can't seem to get over this pain. And I ask them, are you meditating every single day? Are you practicing mindfulness? Are you doing this stuff? And they say, no. And I say, well, why not? Well, I don't really have the time. Well, I don't know if it will really work. You have to find the time for meditation. You have to do it. Even if you don't think it's working, you have to. This is so crucial. If you are somebody suffering from retroactive jealousy and you're not doing meditation at all, your chances of overcoming it, I think, are very, very slim compared to those that do do meditation on a daily basis. It was a game changer for me. Um, when I adopted it, literally, I started doing meditation in August of 2017, and by September of 2017, one month later, I was cured of retroactive jealousy. So it's very, very important. And I think this video will show you some easy tips um, on incorporating meditation into your life. So it doesn't have to take all day. It's just little things you can do throughout the day um, that just will have a very, very powerful response to battling your retroactive jealousy. So before we dive in a little bit further, if you could just take a quick fraction of a second and go ahead and smash the like button, that will help with YouTube's algorithm and support this channel's growth while getting this video out to more people that need to see it. And also make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. So again, remember, as we talked about, retroactive jealousy um, is a is a branch of anxiety. Remember, what we don't like about retroactive jealousy is the response to the thoughts that we have, the highly charged responses to the thoughts. It's not the actual thought that bothers us. And that's that's not easy for a lot of people to take in. They think that, you know, no, it's the thought that bothers me. No, it's not. It's the response to the thought. It's that highly charged, emotional, painful response. So if there's no more response to the thought, the thought won't bother us anymore, okay? And again, you know, there's people that think, well, no, this thought is bad, so I feel bad. But it's actually not. It's a thought just being a thought, okay? The thought of your partner having sex with someone from their past is the same as the thought of my hand. What is, how does my hand make you feel when I hold it up in front of the screen? Nothing, right? Probably nothing. It's like, oh, that's just a hand. You have no emotional attachment to my hand. It's just a thought, the thought of my hand popping up on the screen. That's the same power that this thought of your significant other having sex has, okay? It's just a thought. They're both the same thing. It's not the thought that bothers you. It's your judgment that you place on the thought that causes the reaction that bothers you. And again, these responses are terrible they're painful, they hurt, right? You could be having the greatest day of your life and then it just takes one thought to come up and just suck the life out of you. Take over your day and make it so you're incapable of continuing your day. It sucks the life out of you. I remember like there'd be some mornings where I would wake up in the morning um, while I was suffering from RJ and be like, feel like I could breathe, like, whoa. I have no more retroactive jealousy. I have no more retroactive jealousy. And then one thought came into my head and all of a sudden it just took over my whole body. And my whole body just felt anxious and, and, and terrible. And so again, that alludes back, you know, to this idea like with the hand and all that, like we get millions of thoughts every single day. So why is it these retroactive jealousy thoughts 
you know, attached to us so much, bother us so much. And again, it's because of that adrenaline response that we get to thought. It's about that anxious response we get when the thought comes up. But without that response, the thoughts are just thoughts. They will just come and they will go like all the other millions and millions of thoughts that we think about every single day. And that's where meditation comes into play because meditation allows us to calm our mind. It allows us to rest our mind. It, it, it gives us a break from all this chatter, right? From all this retroactive gel set. It just gives us a break. And you think about when, you know, you get some type of injury, say like you, you know, you, you hurt your leg or something. How do you recover from a leg injury? You got to rest it, right? You got to rest your leg. That's how it fully recovers. That's what we're doing with our mind when it comes to meditation. We need to rest our mind, okay? A lot is going on up there. There is a lot going on. We've, it's caused us a lot of pain, a lot of torment. And really, we just need to, to rest our mind, relax it, push the reset button on it. That's where meditation comes into play. That's why meditation is so powerful. And I'll run through this with you. I pulled this from um, the United States government health website. This is the official health website of the United States of America talking about what the benefits of meditation actually are. See if they sound a lot related to things of retroactive jealousy. So meditation um, reduces stress. Meditation controls anxiety. It promotes emotional health. It enhances self-awareness. It lengthens attention span. It reduces age-related memory loss. It generates kindness and it helps fight addictions. All those things, very much of things that we are suffering from while we are having retroactive jealousy. So literally meditation in, in a bundled up is just the ultimate fighter against retroactive jealousy. Doing meditation every single day is the ultimate sword that you can take to war with you when it comes to your RJ. And the, the, the really cool thing about this, and I've always said this before, retroactive jealousy doesn't exist in the present moment. It doesn't exist in the present moment. It, it exists in your mind. It exists as a memory, okay? And it's not even really a, a real memory because chances are you weren't there um, when your significant other was doing these things that bother you but it exists as a memory, as something as the past. It doesn't exist right now. Meditation is all about finding peace and staying in the present moment. So the more meditation you do, the more you stay in the habit of the present moment, of being present. That becomes your new habit. But again, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, okay? It's like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym one day and all of a sudden you're, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It takes time, it takes practice, and you gotta do it every single day. Every single day. I used to kind of preach, oh, do it a couple days a week. Really, guys and gals, if you do this every single day, just like you brush your teeth in the morning, you have to adopt it as an every single day strategy. And so I'm gonna go through four examples with you of really, really good mindful present moment meditation practices that you can start doing in your own life every single day. You don't have to subscribe to any meditation thing if you want. Uh, you don't have to go on YouTube and look for meditations if you want, although I do have a retroactive jealousy meditation and I'll include the link above if you do want to go that route. But you don't have to do any of that. All you need is you. So I'll start with some examples um, of some things that you can do. So the first one is just a simple breathing exercise. Breathing, okay, breathing. Everybody can do it. Everybody can breathe and that's literally all we're going to do. And breathing is so important because that's all we're ever really doing, right? All we're ever doing is breathing. Now, some days my mind is going like every which way, right? You probably feel the same. And I'm like stressed out and don't know what I should do next and I feel anxiety and all of a sudden I'll stop and I'll remind myself that all this pain, all this agony, all this stress that I'm feeling, it's not actually happening, okay? It's all just happening in here. All that's really happening is that I'm breathing and that's it. 
And that's why breathing is so important because when we put our focus back on our breath, we put our focus back into the present moment. And that's a huge key in being able to take down retroactive jealousy. So if you wanna do this exercise, this breathing exercise with me, we're gonna do it together right now. And we're gonna take a big deep breath and we're gonna to count to six as we breathe in. So here we go. Once you get to six, you're gonna hold your breath for two seconds and then you're gonna let the air out for eight seconds. Okay, so let's do it again together. Remember, in for six, hold for two, out for eight. Here we go. Make sure when you do this too, you, you get really present. You really feel the air entering in through your nostrils and out through your mouth. Really feel it, put your attention on it. Let's do it one more time. In for six. So how are you feeling right now? just after doing those few breaths that we did. I know I already just feel so much calmer, so much at peace, and that was just what, three breaths that we did, okay? And that's really because our brain is relaxed. It's only focusing on our breathing, okay? It's only focusing on our breathing and, and the counting of the seconds. That's it, like two things, breathing and counting. It can finally relax after all this time. Okay, it can, it can finally chill out. It doesn't have to think about all this retroactive jealousy stuff, all this stuff from the past. It finally has a break. And that's what makes that so powerful because the more you do this, the more that becomes the new habit. Your brain will just start focusing more on your breath, more on the present and away from all this stuff that really does not matter. And it, that allows the nervous system to calm down. And so those anxious responses to the thoughts will not be so painful. Now, another thing that the breathing really helps with is, is being able to breathe through your compulsive compulsions, basically. When, when you really wanna do a compulsive behavior, stopping yourself before you do the compulsion and just breathing like we did will really calm that anxiety. And usually after maybe you know five minutes of doing that breathing or so, maybe not even five minutes, chances are you might not even wanna do that compulsive behavior anymore. And every time you don't do a compulsive behavior, that gets you one step closer to overcoming retroactive jealousy. So breathing is extremely, extremely important. Now the next one we're gonna talk about is listening to a sound. It's as simple as that. Remember, we're, we're taking our brain and instead of having it focus on 10 million things, it's gonna focus on just a couple things, one or two things. Here, with all the sounds we got going on, I just hear an airplane right now, I hear a lot of stuff going on. You're gonna pick one sound and you're just gonna put your full attention on that sound. And that's it. You're gonna drown out everything else and only focus on that. So like I said, there's an airplane going by right now. So I'm gonna put my focus on that. Maybe you're in your kitchen and you can hear you know, your dishwasher going off. Maybe you can hear your air conditioning going off. Maybe the TV's on and you can kind of hear that. Whatever it is, for the next few seconds, we're gonna put our attention just on that sound and listen only to that sound. So here we go. Okay, you can open your eyes now. And again, how did that feel? Felt good for me, definitely, definitely. I felt like the airplane was like way off in the distance, but I could still hear it because I kept my attention on it. So even though like an average person doing a whole bunch of things wouldn't be able to hear it by now, I could still hear it. And again, my focus and my attention was just on the one thing. So again, I feel much more calm or much more relaxed, much more at peace. Now the next one we're gonna do is 
staring at something, okay? So we did breathing, we did listening. Now we're just gonna find one thing and we're gonna stare at it for a few seconds. Again, putting our attention focus in on that one thing, whatever it is. It could be anything, it could be a pillow, it could be um, you know, a, a water bottle, it could be anything that you wanna pick to stare at. I'm gonna pick this candle that's behind me. Staring at a candle flame is a very old kind of meditation practice, so I'm gonna stare at this candle flame for the next few seconds. You can choose whatever you want, but just pick something, stare at it, and that's all you have to do for this meditation. So here we go. All right put this back. So how was that one for you? Probably kind of the same as the others, right? Really just focusing on one thing calms everything uh, going on in your body and your mind. And again, during these exercises, I should mention, your mind might try to wander, right? Just as I was looking at the candle, I was starting to think about other stuff with the camera. And I was like, no, let me just put my mind back on the candle. And that's really what it is. Your mind might wander, but just don't worry if it does. Just gently place it back on what you were doing. If you were listening, back on the thing you're listening to. If you were breathing, back on your breath. If you were looking at something, just put your full attention back on it. Um, and again, the more you do this, the easier and easier it's going to get, the more powerful you're going to become. Because again, you're getting rid of a lot of that anxiety and you're sticking to mindfulness. You're sticking to the present moment. Now the next one I absolutely love, it's one of my favorites, um, and it's about feeling. And this actually came from Eckhart Tolle um, in, in a lot of his content. And it's about feeling the energy coming from your hands. And so what Eckhart Tolle said, said was, hold up your hands. And he said, when you close your eyes, I won't close my eyes now because I'm gonna explain this to you, but when you close your eyes, how do you know that your hands are still attached to your body? You obviously can't see them because your eyes are closed, okay? You're not allowed to feel around or touch. You're just holding your hands up. So how do you feel that your hands are still attached to your body? So let's do this together. Hold up your hands, hold them out, close your eyes. Ask yourself that question. How do I know that my hands are still here? You obviously can't see them. You're not allowed to feel around and touch anything. But can you actually feel the energy shooting out through your fingertips, through the palms of your hands. Can you feel that tingly sensation? I can. And if you can too, put your focus on that for just a few seconds and feel that aliveness and that energy coming from your hands. Okay, you can open up your eyes now. How'd that feel? So again, this is all about feeling the physical sensations, putting our focus on the physical. And that's a really, really good one is being able to feel that aliveness coming from you, knowing that you're so much more than human, knowing that you're so much more than like a skeleton, that, that there is energy within you, that there is power within you, and you can feel the life flowing from your fingertips and being able to put your focus on that is an absolute game changer. So. Literally all of these are so good, so good for keeping you mindful, for keeping you in the present moment. Literally, they, they will keep your mind anchored in. <laughs> and that's what you need right now. Our minds with retroactive jealousy, they're going a million miles an hour and they will stop, they will slow down if you incorporate just a few of these things into your everyday life. Just picking one thing and really focus on it, just a few minutes a day can really change everything, okay? Because because this is, this is the calming of the nervous system. This is the calming of your anxiety. This is the calming of that adrenaline in your system. Literally, when those retroact jealousy thoughts come up and you get that painful response, what if you didn't get that painful response anymore? What if you didn't feel anything? That's what these meditation practices are doing. They're calming that anxiety and making it so you don't feel that as much anymore. 
And I'm telling you, if you did these meditation practices, Oregon, you know, picked at least one or whatever and tried it every single day for a few minutes, like 10, 15 minutes, in a month's time, your RJ will be barely hanging on. Okay, if that, like, like I said, it took me one month from the time I started meditation to completely be out of it. So one month from the time you started doing these 10, 15 minutes a day, again, your rhetoric jealousy would probably barely exist because you'd be so in tune with the present moment. So in tune with it that that would be your normal habit of life is just living like that out of your head and more into your body into the present moment. And again, I know how much this works. I know how well it works because I did it. I did it and it worked for me. And, and, and again, retroactive jealousy doesn't exist in this present moment. So the more you're in the present moment, the less RJ you're going to suffer from. Okay. And, and really you can't afford to skip days. You really have to commit to doing meditation and being mindful every day and every single chance you get. Don't put it off. Make this be a top priority in overcoming retroactive jealousy. And I'm telling you, if you do in, in like a month's time, your life will look completely different. Your anxiety will be so much more lower. You'll be so much at peace. You'll feel so much more joy. All the list of stuff that we talked about will be you, will be your experience. And that includes overcoming retroactive jealousy once and for all. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you could just take a quick moment and go ahead and smash the like button. That'll help with YouTube's algorithm and help get this video out to more people that need to see it. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Make sure you click the notification bell and turn on all notifications so you're notified when I post a new video. And also be sure to check on the links in the description below for my Retroactive Jealousy 7-Day Road to Freedom Accelerator program. I have that on sale now. I also have a free meditation down there as well if you want to download it, get started um, on your meditation journey. That's all available for you as well. I'll just leave a whole ton of stuff down there, um, free stuff too for you guys to check out um, and enroll in things if you want to. So I appreciate you joining me today for this video. Namaste, and we'll see you next time.